Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? I'm just picking up all of the stuff down here so that we are ready to start uh, moving all of the tier 3 items over here and getting them all set up. Now, we couldn't find the shaker. We couldn't find it anywhere, so I, I had a look around and I walked all the way around the claim. I couldn't find it anywhere and I looked some more. I still couldn't find it anywhere. So, in the end, I decided to bite the bullet and spend a little bit of money. It cost me three grand, and I had it taken over to Rivertown and then delivered back over here again. And there it is. I think we need to have a little chat with the delivery boys. Um, <laughs> because, quite frankly, that doesn't quite look right. Um, I'm fairly certain it's not supposed to be looking like that. Uh, however, it's here. That's... that's uh, this, like the only, well, I was going to say that's the main point, is the only point really that we can make with this is the fact that it is here. Um, it may not quite look how we were hoping, but um, it's it's here, so we can at least make a start on it. We've got to get the rest of the stuff set up here anyway, so we'll be moving the trommel over and getting the sluices in place first. Then we can get the shaker in here, and we want to get those buckets and all the rest of it moved into place as well. Now, I can appreciate that some of you are now disappointed that I did indeed choose to use the gold cheat. It was a one-off, and a lot of people said that I should do it as a one-off, just use one time only, use the cheat. Just a, a one time only, whenever I wanted to, just a one time only. So I've used it, my one time only. Um, I mean, we technically, we did actually use it three times to get 300 ounces of gold, but we have used it. So our gold cheat is now that that's the only time that we're able to do that. And it's kind of pushed us forward. We're now able to get everything set up and we can start looking at a few other things. So we did yesterday find out that we could get like loads of extra magnetite by doing some different things. I've also had some pictures sent to me of how to set up buckets on this thing. Uh, to get even more magnetite. Now I suspect at some point they're going to patch this because there is a lot of magnetite available that sort of comes out that you can use and we can run it over to the factory and we can sell it. This is the ideal location. It's more difficult to do this when you're set up over on one of the other claims because you've got so far to travel with the magnetite that you've then accumulated. But from here, this is going to work out really well. It's going to be absolutely brilliant for doing it from here because it's literally just up over the hill over there and we can sell any that we've managed to accumulate so I'm just moving everything out of the way here so that we can easily move in place with the um, well the various different bits and pieces that we want to bring over I'll just pull this cable over here out of the way a little bit and I'm just gonna leave this mobile wash plant where it is for now maybe we'll have another little play around with it uh, maybe one a lot of people are saying at the moment that the majority of the money available is actually from a tier 2 wash plant the mobile wash plant there rather than the big thing all set up and if you set two of those up and you put buckets around to catch the magnetite and stuff like that you will end up earning a lot more money than you will if you try to do it any other way so we can, we'll see about that I'm going to keep an open mind on it and we'll we'll sort of see but first of all we want to put well we got the trommel is up over there and we want to get that one in position first I think we'll move the trommel first as it's the most, it's the bulkiest and the most difficult one. Then we've got to just right that one there. I think goes over down the bottom side. This big one is that the one that goes up there? No, I think that's the one that actually goes on the top end over there. It doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll figure out which way. That's the one that goes with the water. That goes next to the trommel. So I think that's the next. We want to put the trommel in, and we want to put that one in. And then these two smaller ones, they can go in afterwards. This loader we're not we don't have any option for this one to be able to pick up the um pick anything up with it i know it moves faster but as we can't actually do it with that i'm just going to move this one out of the way so it doesn't cause us any problems we start it up and give me some lights uh no that's not lights that's the lights that i want there we go right take the handbrake off that would probably help as well is the Joystick working? Yes, it is. It is still working. Right. Oh, somebody wanted... What am I doing? No, no, it's magnetite trailer there. Oh, I completely forgot that one. Um, okay. Fortunately, it can't get damaged, which is very, very lucky for us, really, all things considered. Let's park this one back up here out of the way. It's not going to be in anybody's way up here, and, um, and we can come and get it later on as and when we might want it. So let's just move, lower that down a little bit, and... Switch it off, handbrake, lights, all the rest of it. Right. Yeah, somebody was asking, well, actually a few people have asked now, how do you set up the joystick for the controls for that one? So, 
I'm going to show you. Press escape and you go to settings and then you go to controls and now you've got here you've got pad sensitivity, keyboard controller and controller. So click on controller and then you've got these options here. You've got walk, pickup truck, excavator, drive, digging, panning, picking for the gold, front end loader, so on. Go down to customize controller like that and then click sideways here until you get the one that you want so you've got excavator digging and then you've got the front end loader now i've got my joystick so the arm up i click on that one like that if it's gonna work can let me do it uh it's not actually letting me do it arm up and then you move the joystick Right, at the moment it's not actually there. Oh, I'll tell you what, let me try clicking on that one. You should just be able to click on it with the mouse. Right, it did work. It's just, it doesn't actually give you any kind of screen. So you literally, you go to this one that you want to change. And I'm going to change arm up. So I just click on it there. The next input that I use will set that one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my joystick. And for arm up, I move the joystick back towards me. So there we go, stick Y minus. And that is the real life controls for most machines with a front arm loader like that now have a single joystick and this is the controls that they use so you got uh, the arm up is the joystick pulled back arm down is joystick pushed forward like that and let me just uh, change those a minute so then you've got blade up which is to curl the bucket lift the bucket up to curl it upwards to do that you actually move the joystick towards you so you've normally got it on your right hand side so you want to move your joystick to the left so move it in towards you like that and then blade down you should be able to move it the other way which is um stick x plus so blade down i move the joystick away from me and then blade up it should move towards me like that and that's all there is to it so then you just click apply and it applies your new settings and then you can back out of there and again and it's a good idea to save it as well while you're at it but that is how you change the controls and you can change the controls to any controller that you want yeah i suppose i ought to just show you uh when you save the games do it like this i've, I've made it um i've just named it frith and i give it a different number so every time that i want to save it i click on new save up there i just click on it and then i type in the next number so frith 56 press enter and then click on save game underneath make sure you press enter and then click on save game underneath that saves it but i've got a different save for every single stage that i've been at so that i can go back if i encounter an error and it's gone back through several saves i could go back 10 saves ago which is you know five or six episodes ago and i could reload it from that point i could carry on from there it makes it a lot easier. You're a lot less likely to encounter long-term difficulties if you can try and do something like that. If you lose, if all the save games vanish from your folder completely, you need to go to your save game folder, find, locate it on the computer, I can't remember where it is now, and delete the final save that you saved on there. There's something in that that will cause the rest of them not to show up. I had the same issue quite a while ago, deleted the final save that I made and all the others then started showing up again in the folder. So just do that and you should be okay. So let's just leap in here. I'm gonna get this one positioned and it's the trommel that we wanna get first, isn't it? So I'll take this one over there so that he's near the trommel and I will get it, um, get the chains hooked on and stuff like that so that we are ready to actually start lifting that trommel into position. I'll just back it up a little bit further there and I think that's probably the best place that we can put it. Swing this one round and we'll tip out the chains a minute. There we go. And I'm hoping that we can just sort of we can gently swing that trommel round into position and then lower it down in oh hang on i'll tell you what you know it'd probably be a good idea if i put the handbrake on oh i have that was fortunate right um we're going to drop it down onto there and the last place that we were working we actually had a um a, a footpath it went along in front of it so we could use that one to uh, position everything but i'm not sure that that's actually available this time so i don't really know there isn't it, there was a, this wooden track that went along the front wasn't there yeah there was so whether this is going to be the wrong way round this is what i'm a bit concerned about now because i'm i thought that right if we have that one so that's going to put the motor on this side 
which means that we need it to be the other way around. Uh, we're going to have to do a double lift on this one, if that's the case. Right, we'll, we'll get it lifted up first, but I think that what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have to do a double lift. So we'll have to pick it up and move it and place it over here. And then we're going to have to reposition the excavator so that we can pick it up again and swivel it around. I mean, we may be able to do it just from one place and just twist the ropes around. We did manage to do that previously with another item, and it worked fairly well. Once we got the ropes positioned in the right places, to start with when we did it, it didn't really work out very well at all. But I'm hoping this will work. We do have to be a bit careful because these are the only ropes that I've got over here. And as we know, it is possible to snap the ropes, although it did take me quite a bit of effort to actually get that done. Um, right. Those are all in, all in position, and let's see what we can do. We need to do this very carefully, and this is the one time that I might actually wish I'd put some of these controls onto my joystick. Rather than just uh, like this, but we'll try it. Okay, that one is up, and yes, I was right, we do need to get it turned around, because by the time if we take it over, yeah, it's going to have to be spun around. But we can't spin it right where we are, because we're too close to our caravan there, and we're going to end up completely demolishing it. If we smash the roof in, that's probably not the best thing to do. And you also don't want to swing this around too far, too madly, because it will break the ropes, and we know this from previous experience. So we'll try there, clonk. We really aren't treating that very well at all, are we? <laughs> um, right, so now I'm hoping if I take that one off of there and... Actually, I'm going to just let that one sit down there for a minute. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to take that one off and I'm going to let that one sit down there. Then we take that rope off there and sit it down. So we've got one from each corner. This corner over here. So if this corner goes forward two, or forward one, if I, can, I can't put it, it won't reach. Ah, that's no good. Right, if I, I'm going to have to put it back onto there, unless I can move the excavator over to the other, uh, it might actually be better if I do that, if I move the excavator over to the other side of it, and we'll try doing it that way instead. Leap back into here. We'll move the excavator over to that side, and then we should be good. By taking the handbrake off. All right, let's get that last one hooked onto there, and we are good to go, I hope. We should be able to now just slowly maneuver that one round and drop it right into position just there. So let's just lift it up gently into the air first, like that. Oops. Okay, see, so this is why we got to be careful. I'm, I am really abusing these ropes. This is not the way. This is really not the way to treat it, is it? I'm going to end up completely demolishing it soon. Uh, right, I got to remember that I'm actually going backwards. So I got to move it in the right way, like that. Right, it's, it, it should be going backwards. It's, it's, but it's not actually doing the correct beeping. Um, it'll be all right. Swing that one round. Don't catch on anything now. This this is the this is the the bit where we need to be a bit more careful because I could easily catch it on something and that would break the ropes. And I really really don't want to break these ropes, despite the fact that I actually tried to do that. Um, well, last time we moved something, didn't I? And it was quite good fun doing that. I got to be honest, it was a lot of good fun. Um, getting those ropes to break. But now we know how that works. We've seen how it works, so we don't need a second demonstration because I, I really don't want to have to drive back into town right now. I want to get this job done. I want to get it all finished so that we can get everything lowered down in. Right, let me just zoom out a bit. There we go. Right, now in theory, we should just be able to snap this one straight down to... Oh, just like that. It always ends up dropping down a lot easier than you think it's going to, doesn't it? Uh, let's put it on to driving. Okay, so the next one we want is the long sluice above the trommel. That's got to be the next one that we do. And then we can start sort of snapping the other ones around that. So if I travel all the way down there to get that long sluice, we get that one in. And then I think we'll actually put the ones in at the bottom next. The last ones we do will be the shake. Well, the shake is going to be quite interesting, actually, because it's currently upside down. And then we've obviously got these big items here. And those are going to be, I think, that bucket thing. looks It seems a little bit unwieldy. It's going to be 
interesting trying to move that one into place. I think this is the right way around. I think it is. I can't, I can't make any guarantees, but I'm hoping that this is the correct way around. And then all we've got to do is just lift and travel back over there. And it should drop right into position, if I've done this right. But, um, yes, previous experience has taught me that I very rarely get anything right the first time round. And it's usually the fifth or the sixth time round that I end up getting it right. So let's grab that one there and hook you on there. Right, so those ropes, yes, they should all be in the right places. Let's just lift that one a minute and see if it's at least looking like it's going to be something resembling the correct positions. We're going to lift that one carefully-ish. There we go. That's carefully-ish. And now we can start moving. So, yeah, we should be able to put that so that at the in is from the shaker end, out goes into the trommel, doesn't it? I think that's the way around it's supposed to be. Uh, we've got it most of the way over here. We've just got to position ourselves up above the whole, p whole thing up on this side. And then we should be able to swing it round and lower it into place, I hope. Let me just go back out a little bit. I want to come forward. It's getting it twisted round. Get it, getting the excavator twisted round into the right position. So if we stop there, and then we should be able to swing this one over, and it should drop right down in so that it... Yes, that is the right way round. Excellent. We actually did something right for once. We're making progress. There we go. We have two in position. So we've got that one, the, the sluice there that will drop in, and then the uh, that flows from there straight into the trommel and the water then should go from the shaker down into that one and then further on round so I think next one is that really big wide one and that goes above this piece so that the shaker sits over the top of both of them I think so I think that's how it works isn't it we'll we'll soon find out we're going to get that one next we get the really big wide one and I'm hoping that will drop on there we'll probably try and move it from the actually no we might be able to move it up from the the tipping ramp up that side We'll move just on past it here so that we can then swing this one round and the chains will all be going on the correct corners so that when we bring it up over to the actual ramp, in theory, they sh everything should be facing in the right direction again. So let's just lower that one down there and get these onto the various corners. And I think I might actually, I don't know, I, might, I don't know whether I'm going to work through the night or not. We do have a bit of money. We've got $34,000 at the moment. And we've got 10 ounces of gold. Now, somebody has suggested to me that I should go and buy a whole load of hog pans. And you can stack them at any of the claims. It doesn't really matter. You can put them here. You can put them all at Rivertown. And once you've done that, you can then assign a worker to every single hog pan. So we could go and try that. And that would kind of be like a legitimate way to earn a whole load more gold. Because remember, we do still have our loan. We've still got the loan that we've got to pay for. And... We've also got to maintain our workers. So we've really got enough for maybe six days. I would say probably five days, actually, by the rate that the workers are consuming gold. It's um, it's not going to be easy still to keep all of this. You know, we, we use just enough to be able to get this and give us a, give ourselves a little bit of a buffer. But we've obviously, we want to try and earn money at a, reason, at a very good rate. Because eventually, the idea is... We'll explore everything the game has got to offer. We want to keep sort of doing things like that. But we do need to eventually try to have 300 ounces of gold that we can chuck in a river somewhere to represent paying back our loan. Or, you know, giving the workers a big bonus or something like that. And any any way that we can sort of think of doing it. But that's, um, you know, to like make up for having all of that extra. Which, you know, quite frankly... I wasn't entirely happy about doing, but I felt that we did kind of need to do it in order to keep things moving here, because um, otherwise it was just going to get too slow and too painful to watch. Right, the next bits that we're going to do are going to be... Well, we want two sluices that go down underneath, and then there's at least one of those over there that goes on this top piece. Uh, I think we put that in... Do we put that in after? No, we don't. I think that one goes in first before we put the shaker in. But we want the other two to go down the bottom side. I don't know which ones they are. We, um, no, that duplex jig thing, that doesn't go in yet. Right, oh, actually, I want to be going this way, don't I? So let me put this one over here, and then I think I will stop and sleep the night. And we can carry on with this job in the morning, because it's going to take us a little while yet. So there's 
Little point in working through the night. I mean, I like the idea of working through the night when you've absolutely got to because of the whole, um, you know, making use of every single hour that you can get. But at the same time, I don't want to be doing that all the time because it's not very realistic, is it? It's absolutely not realistic to work through the night all night every night because if you're working, you, you've got to sleep at some point. Even the most hardened of people have got to work at, have got to sleep at some point. It doesn't matter who you are. So I'm just going to get this one in position. And I'm not sure which one this is. I, this might be the one at the top, but I, as I just said, I think that you're supposed to put this one in before you drop the shaker in. In which case, we need to put this one in as well. So we can put all of the different um, sluices in place. Right, I want that chain there. Let me turn my light on. It doesn't do a lot, does it, that, that light? Uh, that one's got to go on there like that. And then this one here goes on this side there and then I want ooh right uh, that one there to go on there and then finally this one goes on that point right we've got it hooked on but it's, it's not actually showing up yet I think we've got to get into the excavator for it to show up and yes I was right it is that one excellent so let's lift that one. We'll put some lights on the excavator. The lights on the excavator are probably the poorest lights of all of the machines. Um, I mean, to be fair, the a lot of excavators that I've driven... I mean, I say a lot. I haven't actually driven a lot, to be fair. Um, the lights are never <laughs> never really that good. You, you tend to use the machines during the day. I know that there are ones that are particularly good for driving at night. You know, they are lit up like a Christmas tree. You've got lights all over the booms so that um, wherever the bucket might be, there's a light pointing directly at it, and you've got lights all the way around the machine as well. It's absolutely fantastic. Definitely the way to go about it. If you're going to be doing nighttime driving with an excavator, you can never have too many lights because you want to be able to see all the way around you, don't you? If you're moving a lot of dirt here and there, you want to be able to see as much as possible with that one. So let's get this up here. We'll get this one loaded, and then we can go and have some sleep. We can carry on with this in the morning. I think that we will get... Well, we need to move the other two... Um, sluices down the bottom. They've got to be moved into place. We just switch over to dig mode and swing that one round. Right, I don't really want to uh, jinx this too much, but at the moment, those chains are holding. We've we've managed to do this much. But we haven't moved the really heavy stuff yet, and that's, that's the bit that I'm kind of worried about, is um, whether or not that really heavy stuff is actually going to break these chains or not. We'll see. We'll see. I'll see you in the morning. I don't know if it's going to work from this top side or not, but it's worth a try, I figured. And we can bring the excavator right up over like this. I, yeah, I really don't know if I've got the reach on it. Even if I can bring it right up to the very edge of this wall, I'll stop right there, and we'll see if we can lower it down. And the reason I've done it from this way is I figured it would actually be a little bit quicker to uh, lower that one down like that. I figured it would be a bit quicker to... Oh, it does. It pops straight into position. That's excellent. Um, to get to this point rather than going down around the bottom. And it was it was also easier to access. So we'll try that with the other one as well. If that will work. We'll lift that one right up again. And... And break off. And start backing up round. And then we can just race off down and get that last chute down there. Bring that one up and drop it into, into place. And then the next item is that shaker. The one that's upside down over there. And this is the one that I'm a little bit concerned about. Not sure if it's going to work. Now, last time I moved that shaker, several people pointed out that by picking it up from the top, what I was actually doing was I was lifting the main body of the shaker off of the springs from underneath. Those hooks that I used on the top were only for servicing it and replacing broken springs. I actually needed to hold it from the um, things underneath. Now, I think because I had short ropes then, so they wouldn't reach. But I've got the medium ropes here. So I'm hoping that these medium ropes will actually work and we'll be able to um, lift the whole thing. Otherwise, we're going to have to go and get the long ropes. And that means we've either got to go and buy them or we've got to run all the way out to Rivertown to get them. Right. If I stop right there and whiz this one round, that will be in a position to lower this chute into, pla into place the same as we just did with the last one. Let me just uh, bring that in a bit more like that. There we go. Try not to destroy our pickup there. Really not something that I want to try and do, destroying that pickup. I'm going to take these um, things off and put them on. It's actually a lot easier to do it this way, I found. 
Just do it like that, and then hook and hook again. It, it seems it seems to work a lot easier. You don't have to try and you don't have to run over and try and find the end of it stuck in the rope. It's stuck is stuck in the rope, stuck in the ground. You don't have to try and find the end that's stuck in the ground. You can just simply do it like that and then hook it on. As long as we don't actually hook it on to our pickup, because you can put the hooks on the pickup. And I think you could. I, what I could have done was put two of them on there, and then I could have dragged this over with the pickup. I think. Although I, I didn't actually want to try that because I was worried that I might break the ropes. And I really, really don't want to break those ropes. So let's just lift this one up gently, gently, gently. Because we are, at the moment, trying not to break our pickup. That's up as high as it will go. There we go. Right up in the air. And I'm actually going to have to swing it all the way around this way. Because otherwise they could end up clouting that pickup. And that really wouldn't be good. Ooh, 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 no, 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 no. Don't break anything. Nope, it's okay. We've missed. We've missed, even though I am swinging it very wildly here. That's, that's probably not the best way to do it. Let's get this one set in position up the top. And then we've got to go and get that shaker. Almost there. We just want to bring this one out over the ledge now and lower it down into position. And that will be all of the sluices all lined up and ready to go. That's far enough, I think. Uh, so we just lower it down. It did work just like this last time. We didn't actually need to do very much to it. And then it swings in underneath just like that. Perfect. Right. I am keeping I'm, I'm keeping it up in the air like that. I know that it's not, you know, best practice for driving around like that. But um, it's just easier if I keep it up in the air like that so that uh, the ropes don't get caught. And so far I haven't actually encountered any terrain steep enough to worry about um, the stability of this machine. Considering that... Uh, it's been fairly light, and the heavy lifts that we've done have been on the flat, but it's this shaker that's going to be interesting. Well, I'm really not sure how I want to do this. One of the ropes just caught the edge of it and uh, moved it round a little bit. I think really what we ought to do is get a rope on that side there and that one there, and then try and pull it sideways. So we've got to pull it back uphill. That would be better. However, that's going to be laying it down on the actual workings and the important parts of this machine, which could damage them. Now, I realise that this is just a game and it's probably not actually going to damage them at all. Um, so maybe it would be better if we... I'll tell you what, if we put one rope on that side and then we just pull it back this way, we could hopefully swing it round a little bit and then we could, like, roll it over. And so we can... Try to try to do this as much like a, an actual simulation as we can. I figure that might be an interesting way to approach this. To try and do it like a, a realistic... We'll, we'll do this as a realistic simulation of what you might do with something like this. I mean, to be fair, if this was a realistic simulation and the delivery boys had delivered my shaker like that, I would have had fairly strong words. And probably none of them printable or repeatable. Uh, yeah quite frankly. Uh, I would have been most upset, and I would I would certainly have had a few choice things to say to the people that dumped it out like this. I mean, this is terrible. What were they thinking? They, they couldn't possibly have thought that this was acceptable. I mean, really. You, you, in this day and age, in you know, it's, so much is all about customer service these days. That customer service looks like it leaves a little to be, a little bit to be desired. So let's, um, we put that one there, and now I reckon if we just gently lower that down now. Easy does it, he says, dropping it. Right, if we go to that point there, now I'm hoping what I can do is I can take the rope off of that corner, and then we can go and move the ropes over to the other side and then flip it over. So we take that one off of there, and that's the rope for this side over here. Oops, I dropped the end. Come here. Nope. Uh, okay, that's not work. Oh, I tell you what, it's, it's down in here, isn't it? Can I reach? I wonder if I can just reach and press E. Yes, I got it. Right. Try and do that again. <laughs> there we go. So I can, I can jump and do this. So I just want to very carefully bring it over without touching the end so that I don't uh, go too far away from it. No, a little bit closer. Don't. It's, it's shaking. It's trying to escape. There we go, and use. Right, so I put that one on there. It's caught on that one, so now I can hopefully get the other one, and that is this rope right here. Can I do the same with this one? Can I get that one all the way round over there, or is that going to be too far away now? I reckon that's actually going to be too far away, by the look of it. 
Looking at it there. Bring it over and go a little bit closer. I'm going to have to jump, aren't I? There. No, 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 no. Rope is too short. That's no good. Uh, right. It's because it moved. It moved a tiny little bit when I was trying to do it. Okay, let's, let's um, put this one in again. And how are we going to do this? Right, I'm going to have to, if I can just inch it forward a little bit, we might be able to do it still. We might be okay. Uh, I don't want digging. I want that way. And then I want to lift that just a tiniest little bit, like that, I think. That might be close enough. Let's try this. Get you. It's going to be, it's more difficult because I'm now having to go down into this bit down here. I'm sort of reaching the rope is right out to ex its full extent. Yes, we've got it. Okay, so we're hooked onto there. Now we've got to try and tilt it back over onto its flat. If we can do that, we are making serious progress. We're making serious, excellent progress. Uh, right. I'm going to do this. I, w I, w I want to try and zoom out quite a long way if I can. No, I don't think I can. Um, so if I lift it up, just gently, gently, gently does it. Right, now we'll switch over to driving and just going to go backwards, just like that. I now need to lower the, I, need, I need to lower that bucket down, actually. It's, it's got to go right down like that so that it will hopefully then pull down. If I can, actually, if I can lower it down a bit more, like this, that's going to be more the position that we want to get it in. So that it will tip it back over the right way up. Yes! We've done it! We've actually lifted it up. Okay, let me just leap out a minute. And I'm going to have to take those chains off because they're now in the wrong place. So if I let that one down there. And I let that one off there so that those chains are ready. I'll grab these chains as well. And we're going to hook them onto the other sides. And then we're going to have to try and get the bucket over the top. And hopefully just hook it in position up above it. And it appears that I am extremely strong because I'm able to, I just, all I got to do is hook a chain on this thing and I can throw it all over the place. And that's made with um, some rather heavy, fairly solid looking steel. I'm a strong fella. I'm, I'm quite pleased. I must have been eating my Weetabix. And, well, we all know what happens when you eat Weetabix. Eat your Weetabix. Grow big and strong and all that. Right. And, oh, yeah, I, I just thought. Some of you might not actually know what Weetabix is. It's a, a cereal that we have here in the UK, but I don't know if it's available elsewhere in the world. Um, I've got absolutely no idea, actually. How do you cope if you don't have Weetabix? I mean, what, what, what cereals do you have? It's kind of a, a, like a, a big, thick biscuit that you put milk with. It's very, very dry. It's made from wheat. And, oh, it's, it's, it's very tasty. Well, I think it's very tasty, but um, my nieces, now, they, they don't eat Weetabix. They eat uh, different cereals. And I, uh, you know, they, they came round and they'd, they'd stayed the night and uh, they, we, you know, I offered to make them some Weetabix in the mornings because I, I do like my Weetabix in the mornings. And one of them had some and she, she, she ate it. She, she had like a mouthful and she goes, I don't like this. It tastes like seeds. And no, she, she absolutely was not interested because apparently it tastes like seeds and that was unacceptable. Completely and totally unacceptable. So, yeah, um, it may not be to everybody's tastes. Right, how am I supposed to get the chain up there if I'm all the way down here? I can't jump high enough. And the problem is, if I've put the chain on the bucket, I think last time I kind of jumped up between the two. Did I manage? How, how can I? Is there an easy way to do this or not? I don't think there is. I wonder. Maybe we can, we, we'll, have to, we'll have to think outside the box here. We'll have to get a little bit creative. If I can move that one, okay, I've, I've plonked it down and walloped the machine with it. But if I could put it like that, maybe, it might be sticking out far enough behind that I can hook these two on and then I can move them forward to get the other two, in theory. Yep, there we go. So I've, I've got, well, I've got one. Yes, I did it. Look at that. I hooked it up without even being able to see it either. I'm getting pretty good at this. And I want one up there. There we go. That one's hooked on as well. So now I've just got to move the bucket forward a little bit. I really hope I can get that one out of there. And once we've moved that bucket forward a little bit, we should be good to go. So I need to just lift very carefully. I, don't, I do not want to lift this too far because if I do, I'm going to end up flipping our machine over again and we're all breaking ropes. 
one or the other and, and neither one is a particularly attractive um solution at the moment really don't want them there we go and if i can bring this one around here i can jump nope i can't do that right uh, let's try that again there we go and the last one and we can get these to fit so these do actually fit I mean, I am, I am having to jump to get them into position, but they do fit. Not like the, the short ropes. The short ropes you cannot pick this one up with. I'm wondering about that bucket elevator over there, whether we're going to actually even be able to use these ropes. I've got a feeling that we might not be able to. Right, let's gently lift this one up. We've, we've got everything in position. We now need to just slowly, slowly, gently... I'm hoping that, like, uh, short, sharp movements like this is actually going to be better for it than just yanking the thing up into the air because uh, I kind of figure that that's our only other option. Right. Hopefully, this will work. Let's see. Excavator driving. That's uh, forward. Let me keep going forward. Right, I'm actually facing the wrong way for this. So I'm going to have to go right over the other side and I'm going to have to spin round. Or I'm gonna have to. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to pick this thing up again. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to travel right over the other side and then just swing it round and drop it in place. So hopefully that will work. We are running out of time today, so we're gonna have to do the rest of this tomorrow. The duplex jig we've seen before, so we can soon throw that one in. It's the bucket elevator and the other one that we want to get in place, and then we can get everything all hooked up. Um, I don't actually know what that bucket elevator needs to run. It looks like it just needs power. Oh, they both need power. Let's just get this into position and we can take a look and see if we're going to need to go and get more cables or something. I've got two generators here now, but I don't know if I have enough blue cables or whether or not that even runs on a blue cable. That might be a yellow cable, in which case that could be more difficult to um, set up. Now we just need to swing this one round and this is the bit that I'm actually a little bit concerned about because every time you try to move it, it's punching into the ground and it's, it's generally causing problems. So yeah if i ha if i was able to do this a lot more smoothly using the joystick that might actually be better you know what i'm gonna try that a minute let's let's just try and see if we could actually do that if we go to settings and controls controller and i think that even if you say customize the controller and you just have it on one of them the excavator digging it's not the bucket it's the big arm up there and big arm down there and then um it's not open and closed bucket either it's bucket up and down small arm up and down oh rotate left and right so rotate left move left and rotate right move right hopefully that will work so let's let's try this we'll see if this works and go back 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 and play continue is this going to work? Can we move this slowly now? You're going the wrong way. Okay, that's actually facing the wrong way for some strange reason. I don't really know why. Uh, let me just uh, alter that because I, otherwise I am going to end up making a mistake. Right, that's better. It's because when I did it, um, I moved the joystick a little bit too fast. And so it actually had it on the return. And so that's when it registered on the, on the return. You just got to move the joystick over a little bit when you're getting it to register to set the control and not do it very much at all. So let me switch to driving and we'll start moving this one up there. And I'm still going to have to use the keys for the dipper arm and the bucket, but we've got the joystick on the other one. I mean, that's actually the wrong way around for me because of how I got my joystick set up, but that doesn't really matter. We can move that one down there and I can... Oh, it snapped in position already. I was thinking we'd actually have to move it down a lot further than that. So, bonus, we've managed to get that one all in position and we haven't broken any ropes yet. We're making progress. We're making real progress. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be great fun. So, let's just come up here, take a look around. And I think everything is pretty much the same as it was. So, the whole magnetite thing. That's the other thing. You know, I was saying about you can put some buckets in. You can gain magnetite. You put a line of buckets along here. 
where you get the big boulders sort of falling out and apparently you can earn it fills up the buckets with magnetite you do the same here you put a couple of buckets in there as well wherever you see the boulders falling out and they fill up with magnetite you can then spoon that into that trailer and rush off to the factory at 10 grand a trailer full i mean we wouldn't actually do that we'd fill it up we'll fill that one up and then we can stick another 10 buckets into the back of the pickup um and then rush off and tip it in from the trailer and then tip the buckets into the trailer tip those in 20 grand a trip that would be a bit more like it so 20 grand is a long way towards paying off some of what we owe we've got our big loan but we've also got obviously we got this gold that we need to repay which was about three hundred thousand dollars worth actually no i think it was more like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars um so i'd like comments below today about how you want me to repay all of that gold that we took do you want me to just find to get 300 and i think we ended up with about 315 ounces of gold something like that say we'll call it 310 ounces of gold and we took that and smelted it and it gave us a 277 ounce bar of gold so do you want me to do that again and then a 277 ounce bar of gold that we finish up with we won't use we will symbolically drive it up to the bridge towards the pine is it the pine valley that the um the one at the top what's that one called yeah the pine valley we will symbolically take it over to this bridge and we will lob it into the water and then when we go to the bank we'll see it there listed still we'll just never sell it so that will kind of pay back all of that gold that we've got and so we're not effective we, we've just kind of you know gotten the machinery before we got the gold type of thing does that make any sense right where do we plug this one in then it doesn't actually show at the moment it just says that it needs power but there's no power point showing visible on it it's dancing around a lot and i mean it's the same with this one this one here has a yellow power point on it once it's snapped into position so we don't know which one it's going to use i suspect this one here at least will use a blue power point but where that power point is i'm not quite sure really have no idea but where do we so oh i see there's a a point there and a point there so we may actually be able to use our medium ropes on that i really hope so so what which one do we well we could take that one and we can move that one and run it over to the other side that's going to be nice and easy and quick um i think it's actually the bucket elevator is the one that we want to do next we want to drop that one down there so that's ready to start bucketing stuff over to the top of there and then finally it'll be that tipping point there and that one we set up here so it looks like the um the rock truck the dump truck will come over this way down there and it'll back up here and tip in this piece here if all goes well if you enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give me a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome we will finish doing all of this next uh next time so tomorrow and i'll also well i won't the way that I record, I know that I get a lot of suggestions in the comments section about different things that I should do, but the way that I record, I record the day before the I um, the episode goes live. And so it's not actually, I don't actually see the comments. And sometimes I have to record it a couple days beforehand. So if you say something, um, it, I may not actually be able to acknowledge it in an episode if it's particularly important for several episodes. So just keep that in mind when you are commenting. I do listen to the comments, I do read them, and I do look through them to for suggestions and ideas of things that I can do. It just takes a little while sometimes for them to actually materialize in the videos. But that really is all I've got time for. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.